Hello, my soccer universe. And yes, we have a semi-final set. The background is half for the semi-finals. That part here are the eliminated quarter-finalists. For now, I am wearing England, because England are not only going back to Wembley, but as I will tell you uh, soon, I actually think they should be really considered the favorites to win it all right now, despite Italy being really, really, really good so far. But I have this hunch that England might do it. I feel kind of a little bit like that. I have to say, overall, yesterday's games were, nah, it's... <laughs> Yeah, okay, there was a little bit of excitement if the Czechs weren't so tired uh, in the early game. The late game, nah, I mean, the first half, okay, I give you the first half in a way, although there was also not much happening, but it was a little bit more balanced. But then they... <laughs> England put the game uh, to bed very, very soon, and then it was basically a reprise of uh, Austria against uh, Germany in 92, where... Yeah, we don't want to hurt each other, so let's not play anymore. Not as bad, though, because, I mean, yes, that I don't want to say Germany, Austria, uh, in A82 is still the worst soccer match probably ever played. Yeah, not much more that I want to say. Uh, going, going ahead, so let's go Czech Republic, Denmark. Um, first of all, I mean... I'm so glad we are out of Baku. Uh, and that I think the two worst stadiums in this tournament were Sevilla and Baku. And I have to say, uh, if any stadium was really got the wrong end of uh, the games, it was Baku. Uh, they, I mean, even the Czech Republic Denmark quarterfinal is not a barnstormer. Uh, yes, you got the Turkey games, which probably uh, was uh, good for them. But other than that, I mean, from a no, no, no perspective, those, those were all very black games there. Uh, that was I actually, I actually thought of uh, that I had. Uh, which of the venues actually got the worst set of games? And I think Baku wins that one. Although Sevilla is really, really close, but at least you got, you know, you had Spain there and you had a glamour round of 16 match, although this was the worst of them all. Um, I hear also that, you know, not only do you play in Baku, but the Danish fans were uh, had their uh, rainbow flags taken, flags taken off them. Come on, I mean... Uh, never! Should anything have been played in Baku? But this is, yes, I know UEFA tries to... Uh, it, it, to a certain degree, I can't even understand it. You want to give it to as many places as possible. And yes, it is easier to hold uh, games in dictatorships and blah, blah, blah. But please, UEFA, don't suck up so much to these countries. Please. Please. Uh was again marked by a refereeing decision gone wrong. Uh, a corner kick given for Denmark, that should not have been a corner kick because uh, clearly it wasn't. If you look at the replay, I, the ball doesn't deflect off the check. So uh, Striga Larsen takes the corner. And then uh, the German commentator said, for fairness sakes, please, this should not be a goal. Of course this is gone, 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 gone be called because the Czechs do something really, really weird. They all... Delaney is just standing there. I mean, he makes before the before he heads it into the net. He just makes two st half steps to jump and put it into the, in, in, in the net. Because all the Czech players go to all the other players around. And yeah, Thomas Delaney is not known for his scoring. So that was an easy 1-0. Uh, then I think the Danes had for a few few minutes the upper hand, maybe could have added a second, but um, by the 20th, I think the game was well in balance. Checks threatening a little bit, but you could see the checks were also kind of tired. And I mean, the heat conditions there, uh, despite this being played low, low, low in the evening, were also not the greatest. So um, the game kind of fell asleep in many ways because the Danes didn't need to do anything and um, the Czechs just could not. Uh, it, it was that 
really there was no nod not much there um i have to say though that that i mean although then the second goal came out of nowhere it was brilliantly played i mean if you see it in the replay uh especially from behind um you you can see there's nothing there however mele at one point pulls a little bit back from goal and takes uh, kind of two defenders from the Czech Republic with him. So when the ball, and I think it was from Domsgård, is played his way, he just goes back and then runs into the empty space, makes a wonderful outside of the foot uh, cross, and uh, Braithwaite misses it, but Dolberg is just there and needs to put it in, in, in internet and celebrating in his uh, very exuberant style again. Uh, and make it to nil Denmark, and in many ways you thought that this was the game. Um, really came out of nowhere, but was a beautiful goal. Now, uh, was this the best cross potentially? Although I have to say the one from Yarmolenko to Sinchenko uh, in the uh, um, in the round round sixteen was also pretty special, especially with the curl it took. So uh, those were probably two of the best crosses we've seen all tournament. Uh, right after the half, the Czechs came out storming. I had already, I think, one or two good chances to get, get, get a goal in the end. She puts one in for two fall. Uh, assist, typically strike strikes goal, and she now is level with Cristiano Ronaldo with five goals. However, the Czechs cannot keep it up, and to be honest, in the end, Denmark probably could have won that one uh, by a more comfortable margin. I think later on, Mele had a pretty big chance that uh, was saved. But um, the Czechs were just, well, they couldn't do it anymore. And Denmark just had to see it in. And, and, and I think given the weather conditions, this was probably easy uh, to play home. And so Denmark makes it. I mean, when you saw the bracket, I think it was not that unexpected that Denmark will make it to the semifinal. However, uh, still, it has, has to be said, Denmark making it to the semifinal, it's a pretty big deal uh, for us small nation yes you have won a championship but you make it to the final it also makes me a little bit more annoyed that uh my denmark jersey was lost in the mail i probably never receive it at least i got the refund for it already so uh if it arrives it will be a free jersey so let's say that with that we also had one very special thing secured is that no matter who would have won in rome and I tweeted about that. Uh, we will have four different suppliers in the semifinal, which is pretty cool, to be honest, to have four different uh, suppliers. We had, of course, Puma against Adidas, <laughs> the Herzog Aurach Dauer between Italy and Spain. Herzog Aurach being the headquarters for both of these com car companies. There's a great video out there about uh, how this city, for most of them, was really split. You either work for Adidas or Puma. And then it was, of course, Hummel, a small brand, against um, Nike or Homa. And I think something in me really would have liked, like the Hummel against Homa matchup, uh, just because that would have been awesome to have two smallish brands that only have one team in the tournament play the semifinal. Alas, the other semifinal, I mean, it was almost no car contest. Yes, Ukraine, uh, you did not have Malinovsky. Yeah, so you were hampered with that one. Um, you tried your best in many ways, but already early on. I mean, the, how the first goal came, it was all Sterling again. Uh, he really should become considered one of the best players in, in, in his tournament, especially the way when he has a ball, he can attract a lot of attention to her, towards him that open spaces everywhere else. The only thing is that I have not seen him do a lot is uh, taking advantage of them playing the, the nice pass out. However, this time he, he, he did it. He saw a few players and he plays a wonderful pass into Kane, who also with a great uh, world-class striker's finish, just with, kind of come with the tip of his foot, puts it in into net 1-0 in the fourth minute. And I think everyone kind of knew that this is the game. England then didn't have to do much. Absolutely at all. Uh, it was also not help that uh, Christoph uh, had to come off uh, mid, uh, kind of midway through the first half. Kind of the defensive center for Ukraine was gone. At first, it actually helped a little bit because from a 5-3-2, um, they then have to put uh, like the 4 one for one a little bit more. And that actually gave Ukraine for just a little bit, um, 
a bit more initiative and they had some half chances. I think it was a Yarmolenko shot that was blocked where you you could see, yeah, if I can get the pass in, um, that might have done some, something, but Stones cleared it uh, rather expertly. Um, but the halftime, very pragmatic. Um, South gets seemingly told this player, you know, pulling crosses where Christ, uh, Christoph was. Uh, yeah, Griff. Kriftov, Kriftov, not Kriftov, Kriftov uh, has been uh, playing because there's a big gaping hole in the Ukrainian defense. Yeah, free kick uh, after foul, foul against um, Shaw takes a really nice uh, free kick. Maguire just bullets it in. Two 0 England, forty sixth minute. A little bit later, Shaw another nice cross. Kane puts it in. Kane suddenly scoring goals. So we have now uh, Sterling with three and we have Kane with three. And then to top it off, Henderson, you know, there were done a lot of changes, uh, especially in the English squad. And then uh, Mount plays, uh, I, I think it was another corner kick that Henderson heads in. Three headed goals. I mean, this was so English, three headed goals. <laughs> I told my wife, especially when, when McGuire scored, this was, the, this was the quintessential English goal in many ways. Just uh, a defender towering up there and putting it in. This is how, if you ask me an England goal, this is how an Eng England goal scored. And yeah, England scored as many goals in that game as they have done all tournament. The game after that was boring as can be. I uh, gave me a lot of time to scroll uh, <laughs> uh, on my phone. My fav favorite scene at the end was, I think it was around the 86th, 87th minute when Shevchenko wanted to give three players some uh, Euro experience. They have uh, no chance that they come off because the ball didn't go in the, uh, uh, wasn't played out or a uh, goal kick because it was just pass, 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 pass. Oh yeah, okay, you take the ball, then pass, 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 pass. And that's how the last few minutes fell. Those three players were standing there for four minutes and couldn't come on. And was not much better that Brüch exactly 90 minutes <laughs> called it a game. Brüch was the only referee in the quarterfinals that didn't make a mistake, I think. Uh, however, he didn't, there was not really a big chance to make a mistake. So yeah. That was that. So with all that, England move on to the semis where they will play Denmark. So everything now moves to Wembley. Uh, I'm a little bit worried because the Wembley games were not that great because the pitch kind of did not look that great. And now having two games back to back at Wembley might be weird. I think the atmosphere will, will be great. I hope that both games will see uh, some spectators, although I realize that with the new Corona Delta variant, this might not be seen that favorably. So I can understand that too. I think that the England fans will be absolutely uh, beyond themselves. But you know, Denmark has beaten England just recently at Wembley, although in an empty stadium. And I also think that the Danes look already a little bit tired as well. And, and now that's why I'm saying, I think England, if you look at the entire tournament, what Southgate did, uh, remember the graphic I pulled up at the very beginning in my, in, in my preview where I said that this England team is overplayed. Southgate has done an excellent job. England have not been a joy to watch in many ways, but they managed the, the tournament. They only exerted themselves for a little bit here, here and there, got maybe a goal, uh, got the job done and then didn't put a lot of effort in. I think the one uh, game where they really were trying to um, fight was against Germany, of course. Uh, where they had to exert him a little uh, bit. But, you know, he can bring in players. I mean, he had Sancho stars starting out when everyone was uh, clamoring for Grealish. Um, and Saka was, uh, because Saka was out. You know, all these things that the squad is deep. He gives minutes here, gives minutes there. Um, tries to not um, make games too complicated. They have not conceded a goal yet. And they were not even really in danger of conceding goal because you kept it uh, tight at the back. Uh, uh, that is really, really impressive. It's almost like France uh, in 18, where you never had the feeling that they were ever playing full on, bar maybe the last few minutes against Germany, where, where, where they then scored two goals and not even there, I would say. Uh, it was all that, um, you know, coming out of their shell. This, it was not great, but... Southgate has managed this tournament and that might play 
big. I mean, not only do you have home field uh, advantage for semi-final and final, you also have a relatively fresh squad, uh, especially compared to your opponents. I mean, whoever will play, let's say, I mean, Denmark looks already a little bit exhausted. And now they had to travel to Baku. If I look, so I would assume that England will make it to the final. And now if I look at uh, Italy and Spain, as great as Italy have, have, have been, they have already have a big loss in Spinazzola. And yes, they also could manage their tournament at phases, but they had to go full out against Belgium and they had to dig in deep against Austria. England didn't have to do that. And then you have home field advantage. So if I look at the projections, I think it's not even that outrageous to see England in not only going to the final and winning it, but being outrageously uh, favored in both of these games. 65 and 58 percent, and Italy is the second best team uh, with rating. I mean, with home, without home, 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 home for the advantage, Italy would be favorites there, but home for the advantage just puts England over the, over the top. And you can see this also in the over probabilities, England 34 percent. That's a pretty good chance. It's one other, 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 other three chance that's pretty high. Italy, then, and Spain, and Denmark. Um, so while I really would like Italy to win it all, I actually, when I think about it in my head and, and so on, anything but England would surprise me. Would be, uh, to me, almost an upset, uh, to, say, to say the least. And so, yeah, here are the semifinals. I mean, Italy, Spain is a really, really tasty tie. And um, while everyone says Italy are the favorites, I think... Spain never has played an open side so far, so I actually could see Spain doing some damage there. And then we have England against Denmark. Uh, that, I think, will be atmosphere-wise the more amazing game. However, I feel that the first game will be the better one to watch. So yeah, let me know your thoughts on the quarterfinals yesterday and how you see the tournament going forward. Is England really the big favorite? I actually think they are. I really think they are. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay updated with everything that happens in my software universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!